We are the wind in the sails of your business. We are your compass. Chart your course towards your targets. Africa Business Radio. Towards a profitable Africa. Today's market transcends beyond ups and shops. Global Trends sets the pace for today's trader. On Africa Business Radio, we bring you Social Trader, keeping you updated around the world of online business across social media platforms on africabusinessradio.com. We care about you and your business. Welcome to the Social Trader Show with Onoja on Africa Business Radio. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all races and ages. Welcome to another episode of the Africa Business Radio Entrepreneurship Show. I am so excited for you to join in again as usual. And should this be your first time, then you are very much welcome. I can't wait for you to know what we have on board today. I can't really wait to take you through what we have on board. My name is Onoja, your regular host, and it's always a pleasure to be piloting this affair. This episode is packed with such that I don't want you to miss. So I'm going to advise you literally to stay tuned, to stay stuck to your radio. Whatever it is you're listening to me via your phone, your laptop, whatever it is, get your earphones plugged in and let's do this again this week. After the break, I'll be back with all that I have for you this week. And I tell you what, it's going to be crazy. You're listening to Africa Business Radio, where you get up-to-date insights on the Africa business landscape. Log on to www.africabusinessradio.com. Your favorite shows are available on podcasts. Download them on our website and mobile app. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa. Today's market transcends beyond ups and shops. Global Trends sets the pace for today's trader. On Africa Business Radio, we bring you Social Trader, keeping you updated around the world of online business across social media platforms on africabusinessradio.com. Okay, welcome back and good to know that you are still tuned in. This is the Africa Business Radio Entrepreneurship Show, Social Trader. Ladies and gentlemen, you already know what it is. Well, to grow your business, I know it's always tempting to concentrate on making new sales or pursuing bigger deals. But do you know that giving attention to your existing customers, no matter how small they are, is essential to keeping your business thriving? The secret to repeat business is following up in a way that has a positive effect on the customers. Now, effective follow-up begins immediately after a sale. Now, you could start by calling your customers after a sale to say, thank you for patronizing me and find out if they are pleased with your product or service. Beyond this, there are several effective ways to follow up and ensure you know your business is always in the customer's mind now i want to give you the secrets to getting repeat customers on this episode and on the trend segment today so if i were you i wouldn't let anything distract me because i'm about to get the biggest secret on how to get my business driving on a daily well my number one tip on how to get repeat customers is let customers know what you're doing for them You should always let your customers know what you are doing for them. Now, this can be in the form of a newsletter mailed to existing customers or maybe more informal, something more informal, you know, such as phone call. You could pick up a phone and just call your customers to know how they're doing. Whichever method you want to use, the key is to dramatically point out to customers what excellent service you're giving them. If you never mention all of these things you're doing for them, customers may not notice. You are not being cocky when you talk to your customers about the work you've done for them. So please go ahead and do that. 
just let them know that they don't have anything to worry about as you've had all the work, the paperwork handled. Another way to keep repeat customers is write old customers' personal handwritten notes frequently. Write old customers' personal handwritten notes frequently. So, for example, now I was just sitting at my desk and your name popped into my head. You could start that way. And you're still having a great time flying all over the country. You could start, you know, create a conversation. Let me know if you need anything I can do for you. You know, start that way. You can go ahead to say, I can stop by with our latest models anytime. Or maybe if you run into an old customer's at an event, you could start by saying, oh, it was great seeing you at the CDC Christmas party, for example. I would like to call you. I would like to keep you updated on what we have over a lunch. That is a big deal. You should try that out and you can thank me afterwards. Another way to keep repeat customers is keep it personal. Keep it personal. Now, voicemail and mail make it easy to communicate, but the personal touch is lost. Don't count this as a legitimate follow-up. If you're having trouble getting through, leave a message through for them. Let them know you can actually stop by at the office at a designated time. Another way to have repeat customers is remember special occasions. Always remember special occasions. Now send regular customers birthday cards, anniversary cards, holiday cards. You know, put your name on it. Gifts are excellent follow-up tools. You don't have to spend a fortune. Use your creativity to come up with an interesting gift ideas that tie into your business, the customer's business or their recent purchase. And another way to keep repeat customers is pass on information. Pass on information. Now, if you read an article, see a new book or hear about an organization that a customer might be interested in, drop them a note or make a quick call to let them know about it. That would go a long way to let your customers or your clients know that you have them right in mind and would love to be with you and patronize you, do business with you all time well you have it and that will be it on my trend this week i hope someone has learned a new tactics and strategy on how to keep their repeat customers you know you need to do all you need to do to keep your business thriving so if you have to do all that i've mentioned to keep your business succeeding please go ahead and do it you can thank me later like we do it all the time on the show moving on is our guest segment and that will be shortly after this break so do not go anywhere You're listening to Africa Business Radio, where you get up-to-date insights on the Africa business landscape. Log on to www.africabusinessradio.com. Your favorite shows are available on podcasts. Download them on our website and mobile app. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa. We are the wind in the sails of your business. We are your compass. Chart your course towards your targets. Africa Business Radio. Towards a profitable Africa. All right, all right. Welcome back and good to know you're still tuned in. It is still the Social Trader Show here on Africa Business Radio. And you know, it's always exciting to know that you know what, you're still waiting for me. You've been waiting for this part of the show. And now we are here. It's officially our guest segment. And guess what, guys? I have Tolu Lokpe Ajayi, a multidimensional, dynamic and enterprising woman. She's the founder and lead coach at Growth Place Africa, an entrepreneurship company where individuals and organizations are mentored and coached for better business. She's also the founder of Colorful Progress Collections, where bespoke tailoring ready to wear and sales of professional tailoring tools, as well as sales and distribution of bridal and party props are done. She's readily waiting for me on air. Hi, Tolu Lope. Hello, Anaja. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for joining in today. How are you? 
I'm doing well. I'm well, sure you are too. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing well. So I, I, I have a feeling somehow that businesses are beginning to come back to life as the, you know, the pandemic is gradually coming to an end, obviously. Yeah, of course, yes. It's getting better, even with the one day on, one day off business operations and the eight to two. No, eight to three actually. So it's getting better. Okay, thank God for that. So tell us a bit more about Growth Place Africa. Okay, the Growth Place Africa is um, it's an academy actually where okay. we coach, we are train, where we mentor people um, to go from confusion to clarity. We develop them to understand their full potential, to understand why they are here and um, why it is essential for them to um, develop, okay, to upgrade themselves from the, who they used to be to who they ought to be. We've been doing this um, from 2018 and it's been amazing. It's been amazing. Okay, that's really cool. So, so far, what would you say actually... Uh, some of the things that entrepreneurs are actually lacking behind that you always see a need to talk or hit on when you're mentoring or coaching? Okay, the first thing I see is um, most entrepreneurs lack confidence. Okay. And um, this is because many of them are not even sure if what they are doing is what they ought to do. Uh, many people got into entrepreneurship because they feel it's the risk of the moment. They feel entrepreneurship will give them the time we have them the opportunity to do what they want to do when they ought to do it okay um but this is not always um the truth about entrepreneurship so um and there there, there are times in entrepreneurship when the going gets tough so mm-hmm. because we don't have that um clear reason why they are there they tend to tilt towards um every dimension of the storm that comes you know, mm-hmm. if somebody today is selling air, then the next minute he or she is selling um, cream, mm-hmm. then the next minute she is selling bags. <laughs> exactly. So she goes everywhere, okay? Because the, the, the first conviction, the, the big why was not even there in the first place. Mm-hmm. And when you don't have a big why, you will not have a self confidence to go on even when things do not look the way they should be. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the, one of the um, major um, challenges of an entrepreneur first. Okay. Now, aside being a coaching and mentoring company, your brand, Growth Place Africa, also offers bespoke tailoring, ready-to-wear, and sales of professional tailoring tools as well. Talk to us about that. Okay, actually, uh, my brand that does tailoring is Colorful Progress Collection. Okay. Okay, so Colorful Progress Collection is my um, entrepreneurship brand that, you know, deals with tailoring, with training, People, we do bespoke tailoring for individuals. Then we do um, mass production for schools, for hospitals, um, forces, and all of that. Then we also import and sell tailoring tools and bread items. So that is part of the great collection. Growth Based Africa is more of a professional services like um, mentoring, mentoring, coaching, coaching training. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, talking about your own brand, that's the one that actually offers the professional tailoring tools and sales of distribution of sales and distribution of bridal and party props. What are the experiences okay. you've had so much doing so far during this? I mean, tell me about the experiences you've had so far during the business. Okay. Oh, quite a number anyway, but then I want to talk about um, staffing. Staffing uh, because I have multiple stores around Lagos and Lagos and Ota, you know, the state. So um, managing both all stores, um, and you know, <laughs> the people do say that human beings are often the most um, difficult oh, okay. to to manage. Okay, so um, the issue of trust most times, you know, you want to take stock, you know, and I have some managers. But then I need to um, solve things sometimes in. Um, Around um, August 2019, okay. uh, one of my staff did um, something. You know, you must have stocked a particular store. Okay. Then you keep going there, and um, you go stick stock, and you're like, "Oh, my business is not moving," and all of that. Only for you to realize that the same person will go purchase similar items mm-hmm. into the store. Okay, sell 
um, sell hers mm. and not sell mine. Do you get that? Okay. <laughs> okay, so it, it, it took uh, one of my old customers to, uh, to, to nab her. Let me give the word nab her, okay? okay. So she was like, oh, madam, it's not like that and all of that. So majorly, staffing has really been an issue, getting mm-hmm. people to be trustworthy, mm-hmm. even with all the incentives, you know, times there's still this human nature that wants to interfere. And another thing actually is um, good strategies. When you try to, you know, um, expand, the more you expand actually, the more the responsibility, mm-hmm. the more the challenges. Mm-hmm. So I would say staffing as employee and um, growth strategies actually uh, used to be a challenge, but then it's it's getting better actually. Okay. So uh, fashion designing has actually become a mainstream in our industry today, like in Nigeria. Why did you choose mm-hmm. fashion designing for colorful progress collections? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, should I say it runs? Because my dad used to be a fashion designer. Um, my mom also. So I think I met it at home somehow. Okay. And um, I have this very um, innate passion for designing. I remember I've been designing since I was 12 or 13. So maybe after my secondary school, I went to learn tailoring. But then there's this belief of how will you be a tailor? Do you, want to, do you want to make it a kind of family thing? So I lost interest at the point, but, you know, it's always there. So um, after my master's degree program, I went back to learn tailoring. So I, after that, I just established tailoring full fledged. Oh, wow. Okay, that's really cool. So you sound like someone who's been passionate about this thing for a very long time. I want to know your motivation. Give me a little feeler. What motivates you when you want to design? What actually gives you that, you know, that excitement to want to do something and come up with your creativity? Well, the first thing is because I want, I want to make, I want to make something for myself first. Mm-hmm. Something I'll be confident to wear it, okay? okay? And um, I, I, I noticed that in fact, I can remember there was a time around them, 2014, 2015, yes, it was my sister's wedding. So I wanted to get um, um, a kind of um, a bride. I was uh, the best lady, okay? okay? So I wanted to get a ready, a ready to wear okay, a foreign dress. But I couldn't get something perfect. Is that the color does not match or the style is not my taste or the... The, the size does not just fit. And I don't, I don't really like uh, when you go to fit dresses and all of that. Mm-hmm. So I know that many people also have that issue. And that was why I actually ventured into brighter, um, accessory brighter, sewing brighter, tailoring. Okay, so mostly we do um, the old train, the bride, the train and all of that. So the, 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 um, the desire to get to to provide without a calling big spoke like made mm-hmm. for you mm-hmm. so to fit you know that kind mm-hmm. of thing so that was one of the um drive drivers of actually going into tailoring for me oh wow interesting now you know as an entrepreneur we all know that it is really hard for people who have decided to start their own brand and you know take over it's so hard it's, you can't even deny the fact that it's so difficult to be an entrepreneur like that is why we mm-hmm, have this show to mm-hmm. encourage people because it's always going to be tough the journey is not easy but definitely if you have your mindset and you are really like you're really focused and determined this is what you want to do you would definitely pull through despite the challenges i want definitely, to believe definitely. you must have encountered some sort of challenges running your own brand either mm-hmm. a colorful progress collection or the growth place africa Tell us some of the hardship you've actually had to deal with or that you're dealing with as an experience, as, you know, experience. What are you going through, like, right now or you've gone through that you were able to conquer? All right. Um, one thing I told myself initially was that people who are salary yeah. I mean, people who, 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 who decided to... Um, Do the nine-to-five. To go for pay job, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most not in any would be better than me who decided that I want to be an entrepreneur. Okay. So I told myself that there's nothing they have doing that I want to do. Okay, so okay. that was the first motivation that I had. 
Okay. Because I remember that after my master's program, I got enough invites for jobs, but I said, no, this is what I want to do. Mm. Okay. So, and um, I, I don't want to look back and say, oh, I would have gone for a pay job. Okay. So that was my first drive, my motivation. Okay. But then in between, there were a lot of challenges. Mm. One of it was funding. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, the more you grow, okay, the was, more you want to. It was. It was work. at the time, but yeah, no more. Yeah, it was. There's no yeah. more issue. No, 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 no. It, oh wow. No, no. It was someone funding. has conquered. That's funding. really cool. Okay. It was funding, and um, the truth is, there are one thousand and one organizations who are well established who want to fund entrepreneurs. Okay. But let me say, entrepreneurs don't know about them, or entrepreneurs are not well positioned. Okay. Um, in 2018, yes, mm-hmm. I got my first grant, okay, from International Bureau Spear of State, that's a kickstart program. I won one millionaire oh, wow. to, yes, in grant. So that, fr- that was the first break for me for Global Program Collections. Okay, so I was able to get high hand, um, um, machinery equipment for, you know, the like of embroidery machine and um, stony machine and all of that. So, mm. And at that point, I started to break even in my business. Okay, okay. so this is for me to spread my tentacles, so this is for me to take more orders, so this is for me to hire more and okay, tailors and all of that. So, one used to be on you, but when I expose myself to the right organizations, I believe that I, I tell entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. one thing you must have and is a business plan. Okay. You don't know where you would enter and somebody will say, what do you do? I told them you're a fashion designer. Exactly. They say, okay, fine. I really wanted to do fashion designing, but I don't really have the time on that. Then you pitch yourself to him or her. Tell him or her why he or she doesn't really have to be the tailor. Mm-hmm. Okay? Then you have a business plan. You, you do your, your one meter to meter elevator, elevator pitch and you're good to go. Or well, entrepreneurs just feel, the, just my Taylor, let me learn more about Taylor. No, you learn more about business. You learn about pitching. You learn about digital marketing. You learn everything that will make you a global brand. And this was all I did. And it really, really helped me to scale my business. Oh, wow. Great, great. Now, I am glad that you were able to conquer all of those challenges. Right now, there's someone listening to you because this show is actually designed for entrepreneurs. What advice do you have for people listening to you who are probably, you know, looking up to people like you to be able to, you know, conquer all the hazards that come with, with that comes with being um, an, an entrepreneur now? What advice do you have for them? Okay, I will tell you first, join communities. Join communities of like mind. Okay. People who are interested about entrepreneurship, people who will tell you about a door that is open some way, people who will put your brand, who will push your business. That's the first thing. The second thing is that you, you, they must have this mind of, I've got to succeed mm-hmm. either way. Though it's, um, it goes, it tells up right, it tells left, it tells middle, it tells center. Mm-hmm. I must just say, okay. And then there should be, I tell people where there is no, um, dream, then there will be no drive. Exactly. And when there's no drive, there will be no diligence. Mm-hmm. So what is, what is your dream? Where do you see your brand? Let that be the big picture. Mm-hmm. Then break that big picture into smaller picture. I think the times that people want people keep looking at big brands and they want to be like that big brand today. It mm-hmm. doesn't work that way. Exactly. So One look at the time. big brand, fine, that's a big picture, mm-hmm. yeah. But then break that big picture into smaller picture. Mm-hmm. Somebody said, um, the the secret of great men lies in the daily routine. Exactly. So daily what are you doing for your brand? Daily what are you what are you doing? What, what will you do today that is better than what you did yesterday? Okay, every day I improve my brand. Every day I want to meet somebody who is also... Okay, okay another thing people could not should be, especially people like um, in my own niche, fashion design, mm-hmm. is to collaborate. Okay. Collaborate. That was the time I collaborated with a makeup artist um, and a photographer. Wow. So I provide the, the dresses, okay? Then she makes the model hop. Okay, exactly. then the photographer shot it. So mm-hmm. it would be like dressed by this person, mm-hmm. um, more by this person. So all those things will, you know, is like, is like win win result. Yeah. You're projecting yourself, visibility, and also you should use digital marketing a lot. 
Okay. I made more money on social media than I made in my physical store. Oh, wow. Okay? So, this will also leverage more on social media. And one thing I do is I do strategic commenting. They should also look at that. Hmm. Yes. I go on the post um, of people who have wider um, visibility, 100,000 followers, 10,000 mm-hmm. followers, okay? So what I do is just that. I comment strategically. I'm not selling myself directly, mm-hmm. but I will just make them understand the fact that, oh, this dress is so beautiful. We make similar ones. If somebody will want to check me, and wow. I, will, I could even say, I'm mean, affordable. Exactly. So that's a way to, yeah, that's strategic commenting. So I would tell them that, number one, keep your head up. Mm. Keep your head up. There will be challenges. Number three is that, don't look at the big picture now. Break that big picture into smaller ones so that you won't get yourself overwhelmed. Okay? Mm-hmm. And another thing I would tell them is that they should join communities. Okay? They are free ones. They are paid ones. You, you get people who have gone ahead of you. And it's easier when you stay on the shoulder of those who are already, you know, there than trying to climb yourself. I tell people, every door is locked inside. You need somebody to open it in there for you to handle. Exactly. So you need good relationship with mm-hmm. people. Okay? Another thing is then feasibility, digital marketing okay. is important. And when you do all of this, oh my God, the sky is not even the oh, limit for obviously, that. Obviously, obviously. Now, to look, you sound like someone who's going to have so much to give out to the entrepreneurs the upcoming ones and the ones who are already even doing it and struggling at the same time. Now, for someone who would, would buy, want to be part of, for someone who would want to be part of the Growth Place Africa, how can they get through to you to have more information on that? Okay. Growth Place Africa is another one I'm super ashamed about. That way I grew upcoming entrepreneurs, up, upcoming um, um, professionals also. So they can always find me on Instagram at Solope Ajayi underscore or they can always reach me on Facebook also at Ulope Ajayi. Or they can actually um, send a WhatsApp message, WhatsApp message only to 0810-3200-871. Okay. Awesome. Yep. It's been such a wonderful journey with you, Tolulope. Thank you so much for dropping by on the show today. Thank you, Anaja, for having me. I'm so welcome. excited. Okay, okay, guys. So it's been Tolulokpe Ajayi, a multidimensional, dynamic, and enterprising woman, obviously. Okay. So she is the founder and lead coach at Growth Place Africa, an entrepreneurship company where individuals and companies are mentored and coached for a successful business. The brand also offers bespoke tailoring, ready to wear sales of professional tailoring tools, as well as sales and distributions of bridal and party robes. Thank you so much for joining in on the show today. Well, moving on is where we get to check out our top three tips on how to succeed as an entrepreneur. Do not go anywhere. This is still the Social Trader Show here on Africa Business Radio. Today's market transcends beyond ups and shops. Global Trends sets the pace for today's trader. On Africa Business Radio, we bring you Social Trader, keeping you updated around the world of online business across social media platforms on africabusinessradio.com. Interesting, interesting personality right there. Like, I like to think that she is a serial entrepreneur. You could hear all of that passion and all of that seriousness on her voice. Well, it is still the Africa Business Radio Entrepreneurship Show, Social Trader. And I'm very excited to know that you are still on the show. Like, listening to me is such a big pleasure. Like, I can't wait, you know, for us to get into the next phase of the show, which is our top three tips on how to succeed as an entrepreneur. Now, we all know that being an entrepreneur, for example, means that you would always have to blaze your own trail no career guides no counselors or maps will guide you from one step to the next you will have to make it up as you go by yourself but hey i care so much let you go through all of that headache alone and that is why each time i come here i like to give you three tips on how to be successful as an entrepreneur so please please and please pick up your pen and paper your notepad as we go through this tips today My first tips on how to be successful as an entrepreneur would be embrace your expertise. 
you would have to embrace your expertise. If you're already naturally good at something, I'd advise you to embrace it. Don't try to be all things for all aspects of your business. Hire out or sign contracts with agencies for the things you cannot do. Focus on your strengths as quickly as often as possible. Do not be a jack of all trades, no, and a master to none. No, we don't want that. It's bad for business. And my number two spot on how to be successful as an entrepreneur, don't reinvent the wheel. Do not reinvent the wheel. Now you need to know this. What is already working on other people's business models, especially in your industry, in software applications and other business operations that you can emulate instead of recreating? I mean, why go through the stress of wanting to recreate when you can actually replicate someone's idea and just make it easy? For yourself. Do not waste your time trying to set up a system when you can simply purchase and install one. That is saving precious time and spending little money. Come on. For example, I always keep my burn rate in mind and run as thin as possible. But sometimes the best decision is to take on the expense of some good system so you don't have to waste your time and make mistakes building your own. So always remember, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Follow other people's steps and you know, emulate and replicate to make your work easier and then make it faster for you. And my last tip for today would be don't burn out. No matter what you do, no matter how passionate you are about your business, please do not burn out. This isn't just a stale piece of advice, I know. It is not. Your health is literally the most important thing, guys. The most important thing in your life. When your body gives out, you are done. Your heart doesn't care how good a business you have. Your circulatory system isn't all that impressed with all the money that you have or your accomplishments. You get the point. So why? I mean, do not kill yourself in the process. Personally, I try to eat really good food. For example, I get enough sleep as much as I can and I create time to spend time with my family and friends. I get to laugh when I need to. Right? You will burn out if you sacrifice your physical and mental health on the altar of your business. So take care of yourself. That cannot even be overemphasized right now. Now that brings us to the end of this week's top three tips on how to succeed as an entrepreneur. And I'm very excited because I have a feeling that someone out there has actually listened to me and is ready to put all that I've mentioned on the tip segment to get their business working. Remember, guys, I always love to hear from you. What did you hear on this episode? I got you thinking, oh, I get to do that. Oh, this is what I've been doing bad. Yeah. What did you hear that I got you thinking that you need to, you know, step up your game or you need to get laid back a bit you know you need to just do a few things a different way to make the business working please let me know remember you can do that across any of our social media handles that is on facebook or instagram at africa business radio twitter at africa biz radio remember also you can listen to this particular episode of the show or any other episode of the social trader show on our podcast channel that is on our website www.africabusinessradio.com Remember in all that you do your life should come first Take good care of your health as health is wealth Until next week I am or not just saying Good luck entrepreneur You're listening to Africa Business Radio where you get up-to-date insights on the Africa business landscape Log on to www.africabusinessradio.com. Your favorite shows are available on podcasts. Download them on our website and mobile app. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa.